This is our Holy Week special. Seven last words they said to Jesus. We have all heard about the seven last words said by Jesus on the cross. These seven last statements are, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Woman, behold your son, behold your mother. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I thirst, it is finished. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. We have all been to recollections where this has been taught. Today, following in the footsteps of the venerable Fulton Sheen, from whom I learned this, we will investigate the seven last words, not said by Jesus, but said to Jesus while he was on the cross. We will investigate what was said, who said what, and find out who they represent. The seven statements are very relatable because they were said by people during the crucifixion, persons like you and me, and there is much to learn. Five of the statements we must avoid or repent of. Two of the statements we must say because they are life-giving. Let us begin. First, the words said by the passers-by. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Take note, they taunted Jesus to destroy and rebuild the temple in three days. The problem is, they did not bother to wait for three days. Because after three days, Jesus actually rose from the dead. Jesus is the temple where heaven and earth meet, where divinity and humanity merge. So, sayang, if they had just waited for three days, they would have experienced the greatest event of history. But they did not bother to wait. So who do the passers-by represent today? They are those who experience the faith, but don't stay long enough to see it bear fruit in their lives. They are spectator Christians who do not let their faith grow and mature. They are those who judge Christianity without taking time to study it and experience it for themselves. They are people who spare no time to grow or mature in the faith, like the seed sown on the path, who are those who hear the word without understanding it so the evil one comes and steals what was sown. The message from the first word is this. Grow, be patient, study your faith, don't quit, persevere, be faithful to the end. Second, the word said by the impenitent thief. There is no mention of his name in the Bible, but he is traditionally called Hestas. He is known among Filipinos because of the idiom popularized by the frustrated Doña Delila of John and Marcia. Who does? Barabas! Hestas! Hestas refers to the impenitent or bad thief. Now, one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. Take note of the words, and us. Save yourself and us. Like the Filipino, Pano naman kami? This refers to those who say, What's in it for me? Or those who use religion only for worldly gain. They pray to God only for material possessions, for the stuff of this world. 
Their faith is conditional. I will believe you, Lord, if you answer my prayer. I will follow you, Lord, if you give me this or give me that. The message from the second word is this. Believe without conditions. Follow God unconditionally. Be a disciple. No ifs, no buts. Third, the word said by the good thief. He is also unnamed in the Bible, but tradition calls him Dismas. I lovingly call him the one who entered paradise by photo finish. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Take note, the good thief humbled himself by acknowledging that Jesus is a king who has a kingdom. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. We already know what happened. Jesus answered and said, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Who does the good thief represent? They are those who believe when others disbelieve. Those who do not seek signs, proofs, or give conditions in order to believe. They are those who defend Jesus. They are those who, while many others ask for deliverance from suffering, humbly ask for deliverance from their own sinfulness. The good thief represents the only way to enter the kingdom of God, the only way to enter heaven, which is through humility and through Jesus. Which is why one of the best prayers in the world is the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. Pray and mean that as many times a day as possible, and you will become a better Christian. The message from the third word is, Be humble. Let Jesus be your Savior and Lord. Fourth, the word said by the chief priests, scribes, elders, or the religious intelligentsia. He saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. The religious intelligentsia represent those who know religion but do not really know the person of Jesus Christ. They have head knowledge but no faith to let that knowledge transform their lives. Note, that the chief priests and scribes knew the titles of Jesus, Savior, King of Israel, Son of God, but they used those titles to ridicule Jesus. Just like Saul, who knew about the Christian faith but still persecuted Christians. There are those who know much about the Christian faith but mock God through lifestyles that are corrupt, immoral, or unholy. The message from the fourth word is, Use your intelligence to know God, not reject Him. Don't just know about the Christian faith. Strive to know the person of Jesus Christ and the power of His gospel. Fifth, the word said by the bystanders or mga tambay. Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, He is calling Elijah. Wait. Let us see if Elijah comes down to take him. Note the two references to Elijah. The bystanders knew their scriptures. They knew the prophets and what was foretold. But still, they mocked Jesus. So who do the bystanders represent? They are those who know their Bibles but don't follow its message. They are those who use the Bible for their own selfish agenda. They are those who do not form their lives according to the Bible, but rather selectively use the Bible according to their own wishes and desires. The message from the fifth word is, study and obey the word. Learn its life-giving message. Study its demands for a radical counterculture lifestyle. Obey what the Word of God says. Sixth, the words of the soldiers. Even the soldiers jeered at him. 
As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. The soldiers were the professional fighters of the imperial Roman army. They were the best armed forces in the world. They took pride in their soldiers' weapons and tactics. They were the executors of state-sponsored executions of those who defied Rome. In terms of torture and execution, they were also the best and they were proud of their art and science of execution. How they could inflict the maximum pain for the longest duration in the most humiliating manner. So the words of the soldiers contained a hidden boast at how well they could torture and execute Jesus. With our state-of-the-art technology, our weaponized crucifixion, sige nga, save yourself with chuckles and jeering. Who do the soldiers represent? They represent those who side with power, even when power does what is contrary to good. Those in positions of authority, those who wield power in some way, but do evil, and even taunt or oppress those who do good. The message from the sixth word is, do not use your power to harm others. Positions of authority, influence, leadership are for the common good. Power is given by God to be used for the greater good, especially in favor of the poor, the marginalized, and the oppressed. Do not use power to harm others. Seventh, the words of the centurion. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. The centurion was a commander of a centuria or a military unit of 60 to 100 soldiers. He was a Roman, a pagan, the one who supervised the crucifixion of Jesus. The Bible does not name him, but tradition knows him as Longinus, the centurion, and also the one associated as the one who speared Jesus' side. He was a Gentile, an unbeliever, but he was intelligent and with great observation skills. He observed Jesus. He heard the words of Jesus. He observed the three hours of darkness. He got word about the veil of the sanctuary being torn in two. He pieced all this information together and by a stroke of grace, declared in front of everyone, including his 100 soldiers, truly, this man was the Son of God. Some say he was the first convert. Some even say he was the first Christian. Who does the centurion represent? He represents those who observe, who study, who assess, and then believe. He represents those who repent, those who believe, those who undergo continuous conversion as they get to know Jesus more. He also represents those who acknowledge God before others and those who proclaim the good news. The message of the seventh word is, Proclaim the good news. After seeing everything that Jesus has done for you, believe. And in believing, tell others about how God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Believe and spread the good news. So here is a summary of the characters and messages we can learn from the seven last words they said to Jesus on the cross. Number one, passers-by. Grow, be patient, don't quit. Number two, the impenitent thief. Follow God unconditionally. Number three, the good thief. Be humble, let Jesus be your Savior and Lord. Number four, the religious leaders, use your intelligence to know God, not reject Him. Number five, the bystanders, study and obey the Word. Number six, soldiers, use any influence and power and responsibility for the common good. Do not harm others. Number seven, the centurion, 
believe and proclaim the good news. This Holy Week, let us gaze at Jesus on the cross. Spend time before the cross of Christ. Just look at the crucifix. Reflect. Contemplate. What words will you say to Jesus on the cross? Let us pray. Thank you, Father in heaven, for sending your Son, Jesus. Thank you for His last words on the cross. And thank you for the last words that we can learn from those who spoke to Jesus on the cross. Lord, teach us to be humble. Teach us to be patient, to grow in our faith, to never quit. Help us to follow you unconditionally. Lord, help us to be humble in our faith and allow you, Jesus, to be Savior and Lord of our lives. We pray that you grant us the grace to use our intelligence to know you and never to reject you. Lord, help us to study and obey your word. And for us in positions of influence and power and responsibility, help us to serve the common good and never to harm others. And Lord, grant us the grace to declare that you are the Son of God and proclaim the good news. We pray, Lord, that we may encounter you on the cross as we spend time before you gazing at your cross. Help us to speak words of faith to you that will bring glory to you and upbuild those around us. Lastly, Lord, we pray for those who are sick that you may heal them that you may provide for those who are in need, and that you may open heaven to respond to the prayer requests of your people. We pray and ask all of these in Jesus' name. Amen.